by going to just under image size you go to canvas size and here we have the canvas dimensions and I'm going to crank this up to maybe 1920 by 1200 and this is going to scale from the middle you can scale from the top the side usually you're going to scale from the middle and I'm going to hit OK and now if I zoom out I can see that I've created this whole new area of transparency here which I can now fill with a magnificent shade of horrible blue wow that is vile excellent so also but you might think well you know that's it's not a very precise way to do it what if I want to eyeball the way I want to uh, resize my image well that's where the crop tool comes in uh, say I now want to trim this image down to the area here I select it with the crop tool it's going to show me the shaded bars I hit enter and there we go the image is now zoom into 100 the image is now cropped to the boundaries and it's a very very useful tool say you have a huge image and you just want to save one part of it um, one thing to note if you make a selection and you want to dynamically move it before you uh, choose where you want just hold spacebar and uh, I'm going to press escape here so say I drag this out and I'm thinking wait no I've, I've framed a face badly uh, hold spacebar and you can move it and it's the same in After Effects you'll find that a lot of the things translate from one to the other so I've selected a face now hit enter and there we go we've just got a face now the great thing about this tool not many people know is it actually works backwards so I've made the area here and say now I want to bring it out I'm just uh, dragging the corner and then hit enter and there we go we now have the boundary the downside is if you've actually downscaled and cropped it to a small area if you come back out it will forget what was here before so I'm going to come backwards ah, which brings me to another point undoing in all programs usually command Z undoes what you'll find here it only undoes one step what you want to do is command control or alt z and that brings you backwards that's just a thing to note if you're confused as to why nothing is working but now if i press control z it'll take me back to my first step so you can go back in increments and then just hit control z if you're not sure okay so that is the picture and um moving down these things this is the red eye removal tool if you have the horrible vampire eyes in one of your family photos and you want to get rid of the red eye uh, use this literally just click on the red area and that should help you remove um, the red eye the pen tool the brush tool and the pencil tool are basically the same thing but you can have like one set lots of settings on one and lots of settings on the other switch between them I usually just use the brush tool uh, one thing to note about the brush tool is it is very very powerful and more so if you have a Wacom tablet if you have a, any kind of tablet you can map so many things to the pressure sensitivity on here uh, I'm using a tablet right now and as you can see if I barely press I'm barely painting if I undo this and press really hard I get a really thick color that's just one of the advantages of having a tablet uh, this is working because if I come into the brush settings go to window brush if you don't have this uh, if I click on the brush this is uh, the, pr uh, the these are the parameters for the brush and um, here we have the shape you can turn these on or off uh, and at the moment on other dynamics opacity jitter and flow jitter I have pen pressure which allows me to do what I've just shown you if I turn this off now then this is going to be a constant you know constant color constant uh, thickness it's soft around the edges because that's the way the brush is if I went to the brush you can uh, mess around with all kinds of good stuff like the hardness bring it up here you have like lots of um, these are the basic brushes but usually don't need to use any more than basic brushes uh, I can change the shape dynamics if I want here I have set the size to pen pressure so the harder I press the bigger it gets Wait. Uh, 
and uh, the, the lower I press the smaller it gets Boo. come back uh, yeah I mean play with this scatter had I pressed the further these little balls are scattered oh Jesus innuendo after innuendo um, yeah you know I got sidetracked there for a moment the clone stamp is really cool um, this is used by a lot of compositors when you are trying to paint an area that maybe doesn't exist in a photo you're working from uh, if you come down to an area of this photo like say her eye or her face basically if you alt click on an area and then move over to the side and start painting you will just basically replicate can you see on the left there's me painting and on the right you can see the little uh, cross and that's the reference of uh, where you're painting from and that can come in really useful for cloning areas of uh, wall or um, if, if you have a face and there's like spots and stuff you can uh, alt click on an area where there's no spots and then paint over and uh, I'm creating a mutant here but yeah basically um, that's how they do it that's how they get rid of spots on photos what am I doing right um, undo 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 redo undo undo right uh, moving on because we're running out of time this is the gradient click uh, this and once again all your settings are up here this is such a fun tool really like if I make a new layer above this I'm gonna make a gradient Let's see um got this kind of green to grey I guess drag from where you want it to start to where you want it to finish and you've made a gradient and uh, that's just the start you know the possibilities are literally limitless uh, these are the blending modes I'm not going to go into this because this is more advanced but um, know that you can um, change these and uh, add a different look to your picture uh, moving on this is the uh, blur tool and uh, it does exactly what it says on the tin I am blurring as I'm painting undo this is a cool area this is the dodge once again I'm holding dodge and burn uh, sponge tool I don't use that much but dodge basically uh, here you can see we've got highlights selected and it will lighten the light areas of your photo so let's make this look horrid all right undo and you've guessed it the burn does the exact opposite so if I as you can see the size of my brush is not huge here so I can change it bring it up once again the shortcuts for everything but I'm showing you this just as I don't expect you to know them and we're now burning up areas and basically darkens the shadows I've got highlights selected which is why that doesn't look too great but if I selected the shadows which is the areas you're going to want to burn usually you can darken you see the dark areas it's a bit like painting in black but um, it literally just darkens the values of uh, the color selection or the, the selection you have midtones, highlights, shadows and the exposure is um, the intensity at which you're doing it. Ah, bring us, in, bring us on to the uh, infamous pen tool. The pen tool in itself could have its own lesson. Um, basically all you need to know, if you, if you go watch my Vector Tiger tutorial I'll go into a bit more detail about this which is on my site, but uh, know that the pen tool works in one of two ways. You can draw shapes with it and let's literally go back to there and here you'll see it's created a new layer for the shape or you might think why am I getting lines but no shape because you have this selected and this is a path and paths are not going to be covered in this video because they are complicated if you don't know what you're doing so just know that when you have them selected if you've made this by accident and you want to get rid of it just right click go to delete path uh, I mean some of these are self explanatory you have text which is text literally 
and once again you have the parameters up here you have the italic if you're wondering why nothing's happening I suggest you press that so you're just selecting the layer uh, oops, sorry uh, select your text and then um, change whatever let's change the size here so there you go and I have it here as well on the left so I have my layer selected and I can change my um, text color okay uh, moving down shapes these are if you want to make a rectangle around a rectangle it's literally as simple as selecting it and you'll see that once again I'm getting this weird just outline so if I undo that you'll see that this works in the same way as the pen tool so you want to make sure that you have the actual um, shape layer selected and then now I can make my garish color a blue circle and it works in the same way for polygons rectangles and if you come down to the custom shape tool it adds an additional menu here and you can now make that rabbit you always wanted in blue excellent so uh, coming down to down here uh, the hand tool let me just uh, whoa still got my tool selected basically I'll switch back to my pen so I can delete this first vector mask I'll delete that layer as well just ignore that that's I'm gonna be confusing you if you don't know what I was doing there the hand tool basically moves you around your competition uh, composition this is useless because if you have anything selected just hold down spacebar and you can temporarily access it and that's the way I always do it there's no point in switching to this and then switching back just know that if you hold spacebar you can move around your composition freely once again it works more like when you zoomed in like this okay um and this we've got this is the eyedropper tool and basically if you want to find out what or reuse a color you think that's a really nice shade of violet you uh, click there and now you have it in your color swatch meaning that you can now happily paint away with your press B brush tool in uh, that pink right so uh, let's have a look I think I've covered pretty much everything um, one thing I will mention because it's pretty fun if you go up here you also have filters like in After Effects and you can um, select any of these really once uh, the good thing is if you see a dot 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 I'm not going to explain these but um, if you see a dot 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 next to any of these uh, click let go and you will it means that you'll get an additional dialogue to uh, control the power of the filter that you're applying one thing to note is that once you do it you will um, not be able to undo it unless you come back so once it's done it's done so my um, my recommendation is before you apply a filter uh, right click here go to duplicate layer and then um, apply away you know um, let's bring the radio blur up crank this up to 25 and then there and then if you don't like it you can always delete that one and you still have your original intact one thing I'm just going to show you real quick is we also have opacity here so if I want to blend things more or less you can do that there <laughs> okay that was enjoyable alright so I think that's a basic overview there's so many things that I could have shown you but also like I said before it depends on what you want to do with the program if you want to paint you'll be using a uh, way different controls than what you would be if you were maybe editing photos I mean if I went whoops if I went to filter lick uh, oh my god this is all going down the pan people um, if I go to liquify this is a really fun filter and I've somehow managed to once again strain to the twilight zone of 
complete garbage. Okay, I'm just going to call it here. Uh, thanks for watching everyone, and the next one is going to be Illustrator. Um, you might think that's not potentially very exciting, but I assure you there are lots of cool things to learn in Illustrator that will help your artwork and help your videos. So uh, subscribe and all that shiz, and I shall see you soon. Cheers.